ho, ho, ho. Welcome to a CU podcast super show special super holiday edition for Tuesday. We're back on a Tuesday, December 12th, 12, 12, 23. You know what we should have for our intro here? That's Mary Egan Ferguson. I'm Jolly Pat Contry. What? Do you remember the 80s? Like the word special spinning around and going into the TV screen, like right before they would play like a peanut special. Oh, okay. Yeah. The It was early 80s. I should make more work for me in on the editing part. I'm just saying it sounds like, you know, it'd be fun. (laughs) Yeah, it would be. It tickles someone's funny. I have an editor, but that's a tickle of bone. On the show today, we'll be talking about the Game Awards. Yeah, that's right. We're talking about GTA 6 trailer and lots of booty. Uh, Atari 50, adding more games. Uh, and, a, a review of the Analog Duo co- uh, console. That's right. PGA, Turbo Graphics slash PC Engine. Uh, also, we're talking about... Um, what the hell is the other thing? Oh, something called the Intellivision Amico. That's right. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. That's right. I forgot about that. Ian, is your holiday shopping all done? Uh, no, but you can hear about how I bought 118 tamales yesterday. If you listen to That's our, all... uh, if you listen to our, our bonus, our well, bonus. Ian, maybe, yeah. maybe Santa brought you something right now. Oh, shit. Uh, if I could bend over more. There you go, Ian. Wow. Merry Christmas. Well, thank you. Oh, this is hefty. Merry Christmas, Ian. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Shit. Let us knock over. Ooh. I already pre-opened it for you, so you got the box. You know, I already did the work for you. I got the box cutter out. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, I like this very much. Of course you do, because I pick out good presents. I like it very, well, very much. It's a cutting board. It's a bamboo inlay cutting board. With multiple... Ooh. It has... Oh. Silicon mats. Se- se- several color coded mats so you don't cross contaminate so you can keep your meats with your meats and your veggies with your veggies, etc. I, love it. I well, love it dearly. Thank you. You're welcome. But thank you, you. you know it should be the opposite. <laughs> but Ian, you know what? You know what is the best sort of gift? Hmm. Not the original gift, hmm. but the add-on gift. Oh. Is, is even better. Okay. So here's the add-on. Here's the this is the DLC, the to, DLC to that yeah. gift, huh? This this is the this is the upsell uh, to the gift. You're gonna I mean, this, this, check, check it out. You gotta open it up. You gotta, you gotta open it up. It's like the Red Rider BB gun box, but it's it's smaller. Oh shit! Color coded knives color-coded. to match to the color coded uh, cutting board mats. Are these? Uh... These look like they're probably ceramic. I have no idea, but they got a good star rating. So, <laughs> so you Thank can have you. you can have one for your veggies, one for your meats when you're doing a meal. You know, there's several different uh, knives in there. That- I, I love it. Uh, I had actually um, specifically that this is wonderful. However, the cutting board is uh, you're really tickling me with the cutting board. Um, uh, I was thinking about how I needed another cutting board the other day. And I was actually just talking to someone. I'm very good about not crossing. Show me this. Can I see the cutting board? Let me, yeah. let me show off the. It's the best gift I ever got, Ian. Um, oh, I this am, is nicer than I thought. Oh, this is very sturdy. nice. I, uh, it's got the little, little rubber pads in the bottom to place it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a king at not cross-contaminating. I well, mean, it's just ingrained in your head when well, you work in restaurants. However, I was telling someone the other day about how I missed idea. the color-coded uh, cutting boards that we used to have oh, in the restaurant. You used to, oh, really? I yeah. did not know that. We Let's, used to have yellow, red, and green. Well, this has several. This has yellow, red, green, purple, red, blue. Ooh, it's nice. It's oh, nice. and white. Yellow, red, green. Well, I don't know. Maybe someone installed a listening device in your in your apartment. That's part. terrifying. <laughs> That's but terrifying. This, just to get you the perfect gift. Well, you, I, will, I you thought, will you will you uh, will reap the benefits. I thought there was a twenty five percent chance you already had something like that because I figured with the amount of cooking you do that you would not want to cross contaminate. That you would, I, especially if your kitchen's not big enough to have all different cutting boards. That I like. That's why I was thinking, I was like, oh, you might already have this. Mm-mm. No, uh, I, I don't. I do. I do not. And like I said, uh, I was it's... genuinely thinking the other day about how hmm, I need another cutting board. There you, <clears> now you got several. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, That's the Pat gift. It's super utilitarian, but also the little thought put so, in. 
what that's that's well, how I think about this. I, I usually like to buy gifts for people like that too. Something they need, but like a nice version of it or a fun version of it, yes. you know, to because it's just a utilitarian gift, it's just a utilitarian gift, but you make it a little fun. And I used to always that's how I've always liked to give gifts, something like that, and then something a little frivolous. And when I first met Vani, I don't think she liked that, but now she always looks she, forward. She, understands her. she looks forward to the utilitarian because gifts you I use get her it every a lot. Year. Can you move your uh, power adapter? That's your Christmas present to me. Can you put them aside for I, me? Just make it I will try. Yes. Okay, there you go. Merry Christmas. Um, oh, you'll get a gift. It's just we're two weeks out. Oh. Um, so what was I saying? Oh, like, and I think she realized that I really like those. Because, like, the one year she got me a chest freezer, and I don't think she's ever seen me so excited to receive a gift. Like, I think that's the shit that I like. I love yes, that. I, I think love that. utilitarian gifts are the best because you're going to use them a lot. It's something you're going yes. to use. And every time you see them, you're going to think, oh, that person was so thoughtful. They've made my life easier. Yes. So every time you cook, every single time, <laughs> you will thank me. Yes, I will. My sister got me the best thing ever. So I love my sister. We talk on the phone. My sister is the closest person to me in terms of personality, but her she has a don't talk. Says she has a, a, a way worse temper than me, and, and I, I've, I my temper's gotten better, but I used to have a bad temper. Um, you don't admit that. Um, she, <laughs> I love her, but she never every year doesn't buy a gift until I talk on the phone and mention that I, something's on the way to watch out for. It, it like it reminds her because I got it today and it was like ordered in the past couple days. She got oh, me really? keepsakes. I'm not going to show, but she got me Hallmark keepsakes, which I love. I have nice. the I have the NES one that makes the sound on the power button and the Super Nintendo one that came out a couple years ago. They did, they skipped N64 for some reason. She got me um, the Hyrule uh, symbol, you know, like the crest yeah. thing with the birds and whatever uh -huh. shit. And she got me also. Uh, a, a, there's a gold Zelda car one, which is great. It's heavy. I didn't open it up, but it, it, there's some heft to it. So it's a bottom branch ornament? It's a, it's, yeah, it's, you want a thicker branch on the diameter there. So, yeah, I got to put those up. Otherwise, my mini tree's up and it's good to go. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I uh, I just bought Vani's gift today. I'm just way behind on shopping. <clears throat> Awfully behind. I, I mean, I even wrapped that for you. It's the only gift I'm wrapping nice. this year. I don't, have a, I don't have a gal pal to give gifts to this year. I had a gal pal last year. I got her a gift and got the gift. It's still upstairs. <laughs> It's upstairs in linen closet. I wrapped it and everything. It's not, it's not a bad gift. Uh, so, so hey, if you want to date me this month, there's a there's a free gift this, waiting for there's you. There's a free gift. There's a, there's a hand me down gift. Oh, All fun. right. Uh, well, you know you know we're big fans at the Game Awards, right? Yeah, we love them. We, watch we, them we have, every we, year. No, no, we have watch parties. I have a huge party. Ian, Ian makes he makes gumbo and he brings it over for I'm, the watch parties. Uh, huge crudité. Uh, <laughs> a lot of crudité for the the Game Awards. Uh, no, I don't watch the fucking Game Awards. I have no interest in the Game Awards. It's always I don't like award shows. Period. I used to watch the Oscars every year. Then like four or five years, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? And stopped. I'm like, why am I glorifying people that don't need to be glorified? Yeah. Anymore. And well, and that's, a, yeah, um, I, I just, I, I, I like the fact that people get recognized for accomplishments. And I think there is uh, a lot of room for that in, in video games. My problem with the game awards has always just been that, um, it, it feels fluffy and it started off as a big commercial for upcoming games. And it is now at the point where it is, uh, not to, not to put too fine of a point on it, but it feels like it's Jeff Keeley's "I want to pal around with celebrities" fun time and get paid for doing and it. get paid for doing it. Uh, so I've never been a fan of it. This year, I uh, it made me angry, and not because I watched it, but because I read about basically. And basically, this is it, it's become a parody of itself. Because it used because it, it, it used to be at least like okay, we understand there's advertisements that have to fund this, and it is funded by the major studios, yes. or excuse me, major game companies, stuff like that. But now I think it's tilted so far into like you said, now it's parody of itself. Uh, yeah. So there was stats. Do we have that a link to that? I put it down. I put down what you told me, the stat. Yeah. Um, so three hours and 34 minutes. That's longer than the Oscars, by the way, I think. 41 minutes of awards. 14 awards were rapid. They were done over like four minutes. Like um, they spit them out like... Someone looked into it. The actual amount of time spent on acceptance speeches, just the speeches, not awards in general, but just the speeches was about 12 minutes. That's ridiculous. They, uh, I mean, to win an award and not get a, a chance to say anything is 
pretty shitty and makes it really seem like it's not about the people who are winning awards, but again, paling around with celebrities. But even the people who were allowed to speak, IG, you know, uh, the, the guy from the... the uh, what? E, 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 you know, Numa, I can't... I'm just, uh, the, the director of Zelda. Um, he was played off the stage in like 30 seconds. Are you serious? Yes. The game That's of the embarrassing. Award, yeah. The Game of the Award winner uh, was... Or year, game, of game of the Year Award winner was uh, Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. And I think the guy, and I think it was the lead designer, was like dedicating it to a team member who had died last year and like the music starts Are playing. You, it's not and on there's network. Like, there's pictures. Wait a there's TVs. They took... Someone in the crowd took a picture. There's big TVs that stay. Wrap it up, please. But this isn't like a, a network show with like commercial breaks, right? It's a streaming for the most part. Yeah. Why are they? So, why are they? Why do they have to have such strict time limits for 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 the game of the year? Yeah, I, I have I have uh, I have no idea. That's embarrassing. IGA. Onuma. That's embarrassing, Jeff. I did got it there. What, what's that? IGA Onuma, I think was who was speaking. Okay. So yeah, I mean it's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, and then the celebrity shit, well, and especially when you uh, put it into the light of other stuff, like celebrities is ridiculous. The celebrity stuff got way more time. And there's, there's been celebrities every year. They, 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 they've had everyone uh, Idris Elba because they're always like in games, Keanu Reeves for cyberpunk. They always have these folks show up at these things now. Yeah, but they just uh, had Timothy Chalamet there. And I don't think he had anything to do with any game that was going on. Well, it's got a Willy Wonka prequel coming out, Ian. Fuck that, that movie. Everyone wants to see. I Did anyone ask for a Willy Wonka prequel? No, I'm sure he's a nice guy. I'm sure he is too, but, but like, this, why is he there? Again, that's why is just, Anthony? Why is Anthony Mackie there? That's just wanting to brush shoulders with celebrities. This is why I think it's bad, because the the Oscars would never think that in order to get street cred, they'd have to have game characters show up or game devs. Right? Why do the game people at the game wars need Hollywood actors in order to legitimize? Feel like they're legitimate? Like I don't understand that. Like that doesn't make any sense. To me, no, it doesn't. It makes zero sense to me because it should McConaughey, be McConaughey. You think McConaughey has played a video game the past thirty years? Like, you, like, uh, I like, think he's playing someone in a video game. They, I, I think that's what's happening somewhere McConaughey here. McConaughey's showing up and just going back to his, his ranch somewhere. Uh, Simu Liu was there, uh, and Gonzo. At oh, least Gonzo was there. I read a comment oh that someone God. said that the worst thing that's ha one of the worst things that no one's talking about is how this game awards has made people hate the Muppets. <laughs> oh no! What did Gonzo do? Did he Nothing. It was game? just no. It was just like we don't need. We don't this. need Gonzo. Yeah, we don't need this. It is an award show about games and the people who make them, and none of the focus is on the games or the people who make. I them. I think it's funny because as much as people give shit for the Oscars. The Oscars at least celebrate the industry and what's going on right now. The Oscars doesn't just have, hey, here's 50 previews for upcoming movies. They don't do that. Right. They, they, you, you, you market your product by celebrating the good that has happened. That's why <clears throat> they do the Oscars. Then they might re-release, like, oh, these are the Oscar winners that came out. Mm -hmm. Which they do like Game of the Year editions for some games. Yeah. But I think it's so short-sighted to just gloss over Hey, let's gloss over the actual games that have built our industry and why we love it. Well, that's for, that's, the, for the future cons. It doesn't make any sense. Well, the other problem is just at, at uh, a base level is like you are ignoring the industry that allows you to have sure. your celebrity fun time super show. Yes. I don't know, J Jeff. We got to talk, buddy, because we're getting later about E three being gone. You're the you're the person doing these shows now. You're doing the summer thing that replaced E3. You're doing like this is it. We got to take this more seriously. I think. I'm not saying having no advertisements, but like we, we're, this is ridiculous. Like the, 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 they can't be 80 20. We got to have like closer to 50 50. Uh, like it kind of used to be like that. I, I, I think like even when I was watching this like four or five years ago, it didn't seem that horrible. And this is what really bothers me. They used to have the Lifetime Achievement Award, the Vanguard thing. Mm -hmm. They got rid of it. I didn't realize they got rid of it. I, I said that was so Yeah, yeah we talked about that last week. And I was just like, is this still? It hasn't happened since 2018 with Kojima. That was the last one they did. Hmm. You can't spend four minutes like talking about a luminary from the past, doing a little nice video thing. Oscars does a Lifetime Achievement Award every year. 
they give it out to someone. I mean, they, you know? they, they, they got rid of the trending YouTuber oh. or gamer, which yeah, well, is that, good because good. when you look at every, every single person they pick. <laughs> Not everyone, but for the most no. part, there's some bad ones. That's way too volatile. Yeah, you, you, don't know. You, you don't know who's going to milkshake duck the month after yeah, you, you, you fucking, uh, you know, give them that award. You don't know. One eventually they'll make a really bad documentary of that goes viral on youtube like you don't know but lifetime um, achievement like you can look at a person's past you can yeah. look at what they've done you know and, and award someone yes like that's that's fine oh god it's very frustrating not and nothing about the closure of all the game studios this no. year. which yeah which that's been, the other big thing it's like um you have to at least acknowledge that we're in a downturn it's been very bad very bad yeah. this year what was the website i talked about that i discovered on the last podcast i didn't know existed game closures uh, yes, I believe so. Suit closure website. Like, there's literally a website that tracks all this now. Uh, Gameclosure.com? Is that it? No, that's not it. Um, well, I, I can't find it now, but we talked about it in the podcast last time. But there's literally a website that tracks every day or week, like the dates and how many people are being laid off of these studios. It's bad. And there was nothing, no mention. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's absurd. All right. Uh, well, was there announcements from this that we give a shit about? Um, I, I care about Light No Fire. It's the next game coming from uh, Hello Games, the studio that did No Man's Sky. Um, and it looks like it's almost kind of the inverse of No Man's Sky instead of uh, it being space based and space. with a, you know, a, a huge galaxy. Um, this is more of a fantasy. Uh, this is going to be a fantasy game and it's still working with the procedural generation in the sense of discovery, but instead they're now talking about one massive planet, like one, like realistic sized planet. To yes. Explore. Like a planet sized planet, <laughs> planet sized yeah. planet. Planet -sized planet. Um, <laughs> Thanks. Uh, it shows them riding around on dragons. <laughs> There's like rabbit people that look cute. I don't know. So I'm, is it be procedurally it. generated some of it? Yes, like as, as it's discovered. That's basically what No Man's Sky did. As something was discovered, well, it would procedurally generate it, and then oh. it would be the same for anyone so maybe, else who discovered it. So the it. players on a server will start out all maybe in one area, then they I'm gonna, out. I mean, I don't know what they're going to do, but I have a feeling they might do a sort of thing where, based on where you actually live, gives you a starting point. Really? In the world, you think? I think that's something they might do. I don't be forced to hang out with you in, in a video game. Yeah. I have to hang out with you here. I don't know. I mean, um, we'll see. I, I think okay. that's a neat idea, but you're right. That does prevent people from playing with their friends, you know, as quickly as you'd want. Sure. But um, I think it could be a neat idea. What do you think about that room. OD tech demo thing? The, the, the Jima Jordan Peele thing with the, the lady talks and the old guy says the same line? I don't know why Kojima needs to have eight minutes every year at the Game Awards to talk about a game that's not even a game yet. Do you think like it's too early for me to talk yes. about anything? Yeah. Why are we doing this? Why Why are we doing this, this at an award show? Is it going to come out next year? You think even? No, probably not. Death Stranding took forever to fucking come out. And that and that, that and was the, that was something that was announced at the Game Awards. That did all right, right? It wasn't. It didn't blow over. It went away. It was okay. Uh, I still yeah. want to play it, but I'm not in a rush to do it. It's 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 supposed to be like every other Kojima game. It's a sure. mind fuck, and this one, I my understanding is it's far more of a walking simulator than a game you actually really play but <clears throat> i think i heard someone say something like it's, it's going to change it's something different for video games whenever i hear it, i always be i always be like don't try to outthink the room on a video game yeah grown let's, let's just just let's have something fun are the mechanics fun you say like a walking simulator that's what people call them so it's gonna be like a vr thing no 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 oh. i'm talking about what death, death stranding oh, oh i was talking about this people o oh no no this I, od game <clears throat> Was, yeah, I know we were. And then oh, you asked oh, if, okay. if Death Stranding was oh. well received. And I said, you know, nominally. Oh, no, no. I fine. heard that this OD game is supposed to change how we perceive video games or something. And it's like, I don't know. I, I just. Sure. Don't. Sure. Because every, every time I hear that, it never happens. Sure, it will. You know, it's not like Doom, which came out 30 years ago as of a couple days ago. Real, <laughs> yeah, quick, Doom. real quick, Doom 30 years, fives and zeros. We, had, we did a full segment five years ago. I do remember that. Yeah, we did. Um, so we don't need to go through it again, but it is one of my all-time favorite games, Doom 2 in particular. R Ruby damned. Ruby it's, damned. We love Doom. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Doom 2, uh, I think is, I mean, just 
an absolute shining example of game design. It's 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 perfect and perfected Doom formula, like this Pac-Man a Pac-Man. Yes, perfect. Doom Two. I think a lot. There are people who I think think more fondly of Doom One, but I I I think Doom Two is great, well, and it's a beast of a game too. Well, like when you look at it, when you look at modern games and first-person shooters, 12, 13, 14 levels, maybe if you're lucky. Doom Two, like fucking thirty-five or thirty-six levels. I can't remember. Exactly. More enemies. More, more enemies incredibly like clever level design yes um and not, not that it wasn't in doom one but doom one is a little obviously simpler yes than, than two no they really they really like packed in like when i think of really good levels in doom games i always think of uh the pit from doom 2 which Which's is right you would know it if you played it uh, i have beat these games by the way i know i'm just trying to remember what level it is <laughs> there's so many levels uh, it's map nine anyways Okay. Yeah, it's hard to describe a doom level. You say like, pit, you you in a pit somewhere? Yeah, and then like, there's like door. There's like a door here, a door here, a door here. And it, oh, there's ones like really up. Too? There's like one here, one here, okay. one here, and it's. I believe there's like elevators and stuff. Okay, and it's just it yeah. was. I, okay. I always remember it as a level that I thought was really well designed. You push. You, you bit, remember these games are technically the like, suburbs is a fucking great level. Suburbs. It's the one that's like outside and it, it's meant to look kind of like uh, it's in Doom 2. It's an outdoor level and then there's all sorts of structures. So it looks kind of like buildings in a city and there's imps like everywhere. There's imp closets all over the fucking place. I gotta replay it. I, I, haven't, I, I don't think I played it that long. I say within the past few years, I replayed it. I think. I'm trying to remember why, but I think I have the past few years. I, th I, think, I think after I reviewed uh, uh, Doom 64, I think I went back, I might have played uh doom 2 but i'm not positive it was like a few years ago i find myself replaying doom 2 just about every two years we should do a multiplayer i'll get it on is it on switch do a switch multiplayer It'd be fun a co-op uh, doom co i mean i they love have, doom there's a co-op mode on switch yeah oh. i love doom but doom was not a i mean i played deathmatch uh, the so fuck out I, I when did, i was I a teenager but it's Sharewood. not a deathmatch game well like, no because it, it sucks as a deathmatch remember game. these are not real 3d games first of all well so that's it's, the one it's thing. not even um, the, the levels weren't designed for it yeah they're just not designed for they're, yeah they're, they're like the stock levels are not designed yes, for it you need specific deathmatch maps which i'm sure exist now that you can probably get oh lives. tons tons and tons yeah um so that's good so happy happy 30th to doom not doom 2 but doom doom Oh, uh, it was about this day before studio shut down. Yeah, so I'll just briefly mention this. This was brought to my attention uh, by a friend of mine the other day. Um, and I'm surprised I hadn't heard of it because I game on the PC a lot. And this is this was apparently the most wishlisted game. Uh, the game was supposed to be the day before. <clears throat> uh, and the developer's name is it's fucking awful. It's fantastic, but without an A. So fantastic. <clears throat> what? Fantastic. 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 Um, this was supposed to be an open world uh, zombie themed MMO. So basically, they wanted to make it like a DayZ or a Rust, you know, one of those popular sure. survival games. But those always kind of exist in a sandbox. Yeah. Uh, what they were talking about was, you know, basically making a game like that, but giving it MMO structure and missions and like all of that sort of stuff. That sounds extremely ambitious. Yes. Um, and I believe they released it was like four videos in the first four months of announcing it. Uh, and then they went dark. And long story short, don't need to dwell on it. The game ended up being delayed multiple times and uh, was delayed in total by 17 months. Um, and it released, well, now it was probably six, seven days ago, um, or five days ago. It was released finally. And what they released was a totally different game than what they had talked about. They basically shit out an extraction shooter. Uh, and, people and, were angry and we're glossing over how many people they sold this to. Um, according, according to this tweet, uh, on the Verge article, uh, they sold it over two hundred thousand people. Okay, yeah, because at forty dollars like, a pop at forty. A that's pop. a huge amount of money. What's the pat math on that? In early access, my... by the way, uh, which they announced. That's a, that's a lesson to all of you, by the way. About they announced like access. only a few weeks prior that oh, this isn't going to be launching as a full game. This is going to be launching as early access. And they were charging forty bucks. Yeah, they said it was going to go up to fifty uh, when the official release. Take the came risk out. out there that oh, I spent ten dollars more, but I'm not ripped off. So allegedly, uh, while well, you're doing the pat math, um, four days after that happened, uh, they shuttered the studio. 
after they released the shitty version of they that. dropped it four days later they closed they closed uh and their statement was let me see if i can pull that one back up all right after platform fees which is what 30 percent on steam still they only made 5.6 million dollars 5.6 million dollars in in uh early access holy so, shit yeah that's insane so like i said it wasn't supposed to launch as an early access game it was just supposed to launch they got an extraction shooter instead of an MMO that they said was going to be like a combination of The Division and The Last of Us. So so like survival horror, and now it's an extraction shooter. Um, fantastic. Rejected speculation imp Im impugning their yeah. integrity and motives of last course. week. Criticizing those who didn't believe us. To our future player... Fun. To our future player who will dive into this game on December 7th, we made this for you so that you will enjoy the game and it becomes a celebration, the studio wrote. Together, we will continue improving the game and adding content. Four days later, shuttered. Here's the uh, statement they, 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 they stated um, real quick. Uh, today, we announced the closure of Fantastic Studio. The day before, it failed financially and we lack the funds to continue. Wow, this is a rug pull for a game. Yep, it's a game rug pull. All income received is being used to pay off debts to our partners. I don't know what part the partners are, but they they were in hot water about a year ago because they were using half their volunteer or half their staff was volunteers. They said they were being paid in like early access in like special that they, they would get special stuff in the game. You gotta be kidding me. Um, we in, we invested all of our efforts, resources, and man hours into the development of the day before, which was our first huge game. We really wanted it, so I don't want to go through all of this. Um, we apologize if we didn't meet your expectations. We did everything within our power, but unfortunately, we miscalculated our capabilities. Creating a game is an incredible, challenging endeavor. Wow, is it? How about you, how about you start with something a little less ambitious? So and deliver on that first. You want a little bit more fun? I did not see this. They uh, there's God. a slight update today uh, uh, what, what is what is it in uh an update um where the hell is it basically I, I i can't find the link to it again but they said uh their response to uh, a customer talking to them was uh shit happens this was our first big experience not we basically defrauded everyone on early access to get the money no nope. no nope. Nope, apparently so. not that um <laughs> and then uh they and, and they delete everything They've deleted. It's a rug pull. Yeah, it's a game rug pull. Rug pull. So, wow. Well, this doesn't really happen that often, and this scale does it. I mean, Kickstarter failed. Kickstarter has happened a lot for games, but not five point six million dollars. So, <laughs> here's the oh. the brief timeline of events from Ethan Gotch on Kotaku. Day before launches, got review bombed on Steam. Fantastic announced it was closing. Fantastic nuked its website, YouTube, Discord, and CEO Edward Gadavstev's uh, Twitter account. Day before gets removed from Steam. Publisher Mytona promises full refunds. Fantastic continues to post through it. Wow. So is the Twitter still up or no? Uh, there, there is, yeah. Yep. So what, are the, what is the last thing they, they basically said about it? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 yeah, they're just... Official statement. Let's see, what do they got? They're going to give out refunds to everyone? What do they think? So the last thing they posted was 20 hours ago. Answer to those who ask for a refund. Mytona and we're currently working with Steam to allow refunds for any player who chooses to request one, regardless of game time. Fantastic received zero and will receive nothing from the day before sales. How would they receive nothing? I don't understand that. The money already came into their account. Through Steam sales. I don't understand. Uh, unless it went to the publisher first and the publisher was like, you're not getting anything. Well, then who was who the publisher? Mytona. So then well, how does the publisher has to refund it then? That's what my guess is, yes. I don't, I don't know, but either, yeah, I, I, there's obviously a little bit of a language barrier here, so I don't know what they're trying to say, but my guess is maybe the publisher had it and did not pay out the developers yet. Uh, you said it got bombed on the reviews? Yeah, apparently. Do we have those up here? Let's. No, see. I don't. I'm sorry. I, I clicked on the day after by accident, which is also a survival horror movie. Uh, that, but that's not out yet. The the day before. The day well, I don't know if we can get them if Steam if Steam pulled it. I don't know if we can get them anymore. Uh, one star, twenty one thousand reviews. At least when I cl look at on Google. Oh yeah, here um, it is. Yeah, you can't. Yep, you can't download it, but it uh, is still here. Overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly negative. negative. Yep. 
<laughs> they released the tape before and closed, closed the, the day, day after. after. And that was recommended, most helpful. Oh, they recommend the review, I guess. Um, point one hours on record. Uh, product refunded after playing for 4.8 hours. Don't dead open inside. <laughs> I bought this game just to give it a negative review. <laughs> the day before, buy the day after refund. 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wish there was uh, less jokes because I, I, I would like a, a more accurate idea of like how the game they released it has to be on plays. YouTube. Yeah, probably. Uh, sure. Greatest scam in gaming history. Yeah. Wow. Is this on? The, the, we, sh we should have a link to this. You know, the gameplay, the day before uh, gameplay, YouTube. This has to be on YouTube. People bitching about, rightfully so, how bad this is. The first, uh, IGN did the first 22 minutes. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's, 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 look. I'm looking at that. So far, okay. It's it looks like you know it's some dialogue. You're in a bar with someone. And I'm sure the zombie's gonna break in, uh, you know, soon. But, I mean, it looks like it looks like a kind of current gen game, third person. Like yeah, like The Last of Us. That's what it looks like. You're walking around in a bar. But, yeah, I'm okay. sure. I'm sure it probably just copies the. Uh... You can build your own fucking hut outside with furniture and hang out. And oh, they plagiarized uh, a bunch of like uh, trailers too. Like word oh, really? for word, they used lines that were used in other trailers. Oh, that's fraud! Then. I, Come yeah. on. Yeah, it's it's uh, not 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 graphics, but like the actual words and stuff like that. Wow! And now she's now the the lady uh, with is out in the street. Zombies are chasing her, like New York City wasteland, and she's shooting at them. That's that's the game. Yeah, not yeah, not open world. I think that's that's yeah. the issue. Yeah, probably some, well, some not all not anything like what they said it was going. I guess, to be I guess like. you do some missions and you do some shit, but not not what people thought they were getting. Yeah, and it's funny to say like, well, we didn't have the financials. <sighs> well, then you have to scale down your game until you get there. Yeah, and then maybe you build it up. You can't lie from the start. You have to. You have to be a financial planner when you're doing a business, even with art like that. You can't say, I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna make a, a movie better than Endgame on a ten thousand dollar budget. You just can't do things like that. Right. It's irresponsible. And people buying the games don't know any better. They're not the experts. They don't know how it works. If they think they're getting promised something from a from a plagiarized trailer, they're gonna put down their forty bucks. They don't they, they may not know anything. Like I said they did not plagiarize the visuals, they plagiarized the fucking script. That's but that's I'm just bad, saying though. that's oh it is. I'm just saying it's ridiculous. Oh my god. So who did our Jesus game? They never plagiarized a script script. I am Jesus Christ on Steam. <laughs> Good old Playway. Playway, you know, you get what you pay for. And you know, <laughs> there is no secret about that. I remember I watched some gameplay of I am Jesus Christ, oh, and I was boy. like, you get what you pay for. Yeah. Fe your fetch question your fe fe fetch questing as Jesus is what you're basically that's what you're basically doing. Love a good Jesus <laughs> fetch quest. <laughs> that's what it is. All right, moving on. Uh, GTA 6 dropped the trailer. Dropped. It's not coming out until 2025 and probably not early 2025. Um, it was like the most watched video in the history of YouTube in one day. Oh, really? It was like 93 million in one day. Now it's 144. So this is like, uh, you know, a, it's basically Vice City remake. It's their stand in for Florida. Right. If you see the trailer. And what's interesting, if you can call it, do I hear music? Are you playing music? I accidentally had volume on for the trailer for okay. it. Okay. They're, they're parroting real world things that have actually happened in Florida, like alligators and pools. Oh. <laughs> and, and, a, and a woman, a woman uh, twerking on top of a car. And like that, that actually happened while mm -hmm. driving on, on a road. <clears throat> and it's obviously, it's been what? Almost, it's been 10 years since GTA 5. I will look while you talk. I think it's almost 10 years. Um, that would be, that seems about right. The world has changed a lot in 10 years. Social media has blown up like 10 times what it was 10 years ago. And that's what this... Over 10 years, September 17th, 2013. Yeah, we're radically different uh, now. And that's what, kind of what the trailer reflects, which, which I think is going to be the interesting social commentary. Because believe it or not, GTA games aren't just about, you know, robbing people and beating up hookers and stealing cars. There's usually some social commentary heavily sprinkled in. Oh yeah, heavy uh, satire and social commentary of and, the uh, current landscape. And a lot of this is like, in the trailer you can see, uh, like an Instagram live sort of parodies and mm. people liking outrageous stuff happening and there's like um, police cam footage at one at one point being shown to someone like doing a drug. Like, 
they can mine this for a lot on that side. Oh how, yeah, how the, how social media has like warped us in in a lot of ways as a society, and it plays upon some of our sort of darkest mm-hmm. both desires and fears. I'll we'll just say and twists some things. They I, have a chance to do something with that. that I think is interesting. That I think the trailer hints at. A little bit. I mean, I'm overthinking it, but that could be interesting. I think it's going to be an interesting game. I have not played a 3D Grand Theft Auto. Not one. Like, not even minutes of it. I just, I've it's never appealed to me. You never saw me. GTA 3? Even the original you never played? No, I only, I played the first two. You never played GTA 3? Wow. I haven't played since the f- second wow. one. And it's not, it's not for any moral reason or anything like that. I just, I never did. Well, obviously GTA but, 3 was like revolutionary to play. It was like, this is ridiculous. But uh, <laughs> this, yeah, this looks interesting. I'm not going to follow it. I'm not going to pay attention to it when it comes out. It comes out, but I might actually give it a shot. Like imagine if like they build in like social media like a living, breathing social media, which I think is what they're probably going to go for. Well, I mean, like that was something, I mean, it wasn't done well, but in GTA uh, 4 uh, on the 360. That one I never played. Uh, they, I, neither did I, but I know they tried to, like, you could go on your computer and check, like, news websites and stuff like that. Oh, okay. So, you know, I think that's something that they've wanted to do in the past, maybe didn't have the budget or the power to do it. I wouldn't be surprised if they revisit that. But, yeah, but this, imagine this, where you actually have living, breathing characters that will do like live updates from where they're at that you can go sure see what's mm-hmm. or they'll announce a crime in progress or that you can do a lot of stuff you can do like a lot with this sort of thing oh yeah i think absolutely i and, agree and that's where i think this game is going to hit on that's that's my that's my pat pro- prognostication is i think they're going to hit on that and that's what's going to make it kind of cool a pat gnostic pat gnostic yeah i don't know i'm writing about this sometimes but i think that's interesting that they focused a lot on that uh you know Anyway, well, there you go. Well, I mean, since 2013, I mean, the the way social media, the amount of people who use social yes. media, I mean, it's completely different. The world's entirely different now. Yeah. You know what's not different? UltimateNintendo.com. You, you can go there for the Tried past and true. several years. You, you buy certain certain guidebooks. Well, one less, which I'll get into in a moment. RBI baseball stickers. You can get um, enamel pins for the holiday season. They're keepsakes and stocking stuffers. Keepsakes. They're keepsakes and stocking stuffers. All at ultimateintendo.com. I'll be on Twitch tomorrow. I'm doing December commercials, Christmas commercials all month long. Twitch.tv slash country code. Ian may show up, but probably not. Even though he should, since I got my nice gift. Um, 15th anniversary of Pat the Punk came out and Shark Shark. I'll, I'll try to do a holiday video, but I got a lot going on. So this was this is good and bad news coming up. Good and bad <laughs> news. The NES book is uh, sold out. There's no more in the no more in the warehouse. The third print run sold out. Of the the one where Bobby the Brain Heathen standing in front of, thanks thanks to everyone for making it a success over the past seven years that has come out. I I'm gonna put out a social media little blast about it tomorrow or Thursday. A so, toot, a quick toot. Yeah, I, I had to cancel four or five orders because the the inventory at the warehouse didn't sync up to having people be able to Amazon. So I felt bad. I said, Oh no. Yeah, it can happen. <laughs> There's shrinkage, as they call it. There are a few available here and there. I've wholesaled to uh, Double Jump video games. I don't know if they ship them, but search them out. Big Bad, Big Bad Toy Store.com. I checked. The, the special edition is there as well. I don't know how many they have stock. I forget how many I wholesaled to them a few years ago. There's none at Limited Run. There's none at Puka Puka Games in Northern Ireland. There's none at Spilo Sant, who used to have some. They still have Super Nintendo ones, which are available. And there's none at uh, Retro MTL Montreal, I don't believe. So, so we'll ask around, we'll find a used copy. They're there. Just don't pay an exorbitant prices. That's all. Don't, don't, don't fall for scalpers. Now, will I do a fourth print run, Ian? I think you might. Well, no. You might, Rabbit? No. I'll, I'll do, I'll do a, a revision, a new edition. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, the, like the old group we love, new edition. Okay. Because I have even permission to do that. So I'm going to revamp the book at some point next year. So, so the book will not be available new for probably at least a year. Maybe, 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 maybe the holiday season. I don't want to pressure myself. And the N64 book will be for pre orders later this week. I'm probably going to put them up. I, I could have put them up earlier, but now the light's at the end of the tunnel. I know it's, I know it's, I know people have been asking me forever. But there you go. So that's the update. There you go. People like the NES book. People like the NES. It's a, you know, it's, Whoa. A, it's a thing. You want to say something here about Survivor Punk? Uh, CM Punk. <laughs> Survivor Punk. CM Punk returns to Survivor Series. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I was wrong. I, I figured uh, WWE did not want to screw with them anymore. They don't need to. They got all the money in the, in the world, and their events do really great. It's a higher point than a few years ago for WWE. They're, Is it really? Yeah, they've been more popular now. They've been quite a bit. Um, 
So he came back in Survivor Series at the very end. I think they even didn't even tell some of the wrestlers that like it was like a secret. Like it didn't get out at all. Ooh. The, the secret did not get out. So probably angered some people. Oh, I mean, the, well, well, Seth Rollins' reaction was like if he was acting was the best act ever, but because he was not pleased. Well, I'm I'm going either, to guess maybe he was not acting. Either way, they've made but. it into an angle already, but he was he was dropping the f bomb. Was it, it wasn't on TV, but like in front of the audience, he was saying, F you, middle figure to punk. Like, because I think some of the wrestlers saw it as usurping their big uh, war games match in the, in the, in the double, you know, cage. Yeah. And now they get overstaged by CM Punk coming back at the end of the pay per view. It was literally like after they put the little copyright thing, then they did it. Like, no more announcers or whatever. And he comes out for a few minutes. That was the end of the Survivor Series. So, what was the point then? Just, hey, I'm here? Well, Chicago. So oh, have, okay. I, yeah, I didn't know. Right. He's okay. huge. This is Chicago, yes. obviously. So CM Punk is not well liked among some of the wrestlers. And I talk to people that are actual wrestlers, and they sort of say the same thing. He's like, it's what you see on TV. He's prickly. He can rub people the wrong way. I mean, I do too. But like, he has his reputation for that. Some people like him, but some people don't. It, it, it's sort of like he butts heads with people. So Seth Rollins in real life doesn't like him. Seth Rollins did an interview of the year where he says, hi, he's a cancer. Stay away. We don't want you here. We saw what you did there. We know, like, meaning AEW, we know what yeah. you are. Uh, Kevin Owens historically does not like him. No, I mean, that, that's, that goes that's back forever, known. I think. Yeah, that's R- Ring of Honor stuff from yeah. forever ago. Um, Roman Reigns doesn't like him. I guess The Shield doesn't like him from back then. I think they didn't like how he, they were treated to one another back then before he left. Because uh, that's when The Shield was big in 13, 14. So, yeah, I don't know. They got to keep him on a leash to make sure he behaves well. But there's money to be made. I mean, Seth Rollins, they're doing a program now, and they can do a program with Cena, who might come back every now and then. And they can do one with Cody, who used to both be at AEW, so it's kind of weird. They, they cross over. I don't know. Cody left before CM Punk got there. Is that what happened? Yeah, that was the timing. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I know you don't like him at all. No, I don't. I, I've hated him since Ring of Honor, and I didn't even know about the the beef then. I just, I did. I he he's was overhyped. The, he was he's fucking overhyped. He's very good on the mic. His ring work was pretty good ten years ago in AEW. His psychology is good, but he's forty five and he's a little broken down. I'll just say that. Sure. I, don't, I don't think he can go like he used to. It's I'm, and that's not against him. It's tough being a pro wrestler. It's not against him, but like forty five. I'm sure. Unless you've kept yourself in shape. Really good shape, ring shape, and he ha- he hasn't been doing that the past ten years. No, he's taken a lot um, of breaks and done stupid yeah. shit like decide he can go fight in MMA. Y- yeah, that was not good. That that's probably my biggest thing against him being a hypocrite. He he took people's spots he didn't deserve and was paid a lot of money for an opportunity he did not deserve at that. Yep. But whatever. But that's what I think about that. I'm talking about Atari adding games to the Atari 50. So Digital Eclipse, uh, just real quick. We are, by the way, we we are not doing bad on time for this intro. Oh, I restarted. That's why. Um, yeah, <laughs> the uh, the uh, wonderful Atari 50th collection that we've talked about before that Digital Eclipse put out. Um, they surprised people uh, like two weeks before uh, hand announcing that they were going to add. Um, I think like tw- it was 12 games to the Atari uh, 50th collection. I checked them out. Um, there's a lot. Of, there's some prototypes and stuff on there. Homebrew. They uh, some homebrew. They added uh, prototypes. Homebrew. They added um, a Lynx game. Warbirds. Warbirds. Uh, they added um, Circus Atari, which I like. Uh, I like quite a I bit. I think I didn't mind that. I can't remember. Is that, that's a, is it's that a pong. paddle game, right? It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's Pong. Yeah. Um, which actually would make me maybe go and... Th- I don't know if you saw, when Atari 50th came out, um, they released uh, 3D print CAD uh, documents that you could use to make uh, paddle harnesses for your Switch or your Xbox One I controller. That. And what it does is it 3D prints that there's a knob and it grabs onto the knob. The, there's a hook. Like it's on a you know a rail, so when you turn the knob, this hook goes back and forth. It grabs onto the analog stick, and there's a mode called relative in the options. So you, as you it'll twist the, the paddle, position? it keeps the position. Ooh, yeah. So that'll make I, that'll make me actually hey, do that. Hey, digital clips, you just sell that as a standalone product, and people would buy it. Probably. Well, I mean, they released it. I don't know that they have the production capabilities to. Do I'm just it, saying. I'm just thinking. Yeah, it, I mean, it's cool as hell. Um, but the one that got released that I saw a lot of people excited about. Maze craze? No, bowling. Double, double dunk? 
bowling okay. for uh, Atari 2600 mini golf? bowling. I don't remember mini golf. And I had never played it, and Atari 2600 bowling is actually really fun. Let me, let me look this up. I don't know if I remember it. It's fun. It's very basic, but it's very fun to play. Um, oh, I remember bowling. Yeah. I played it at Billy uh, Bill Billy's house like 35 years ago. When I, I like it. One of the more like simple, but just like eternally fun to kind of play um, games on there. And I've heard Maze Craze is fun in two players, but I've never played it two players. Okay. So uh, that's really cool. They also, Venture. they also announced yeah. um, more games will be coming. I don't think that's the only update that the Atari 50th will ever get. And they also announced the upcoming, uh, the next gold series is the Jeff Minter collection um, of Llamasoft, who's done a number of fun games, including uh, his probably his best known was he, he was the guy who made Tempest 2000. It's a good one. So that's right. going to be really cool. That's going to have like 45 of his old computer games on it. That's interesting because now you're you're not looking at like one console or one one series. You're looking at one dev. It's interesting. Yes, that dev. that I thought was interesting. And I don't know that I that that's love that because it seems to shake up what I thought the gold master series. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the release What I'm I, I, I'm I'm. I'm more confused about what the gold, like what the gold master series is going to be then. Cause I assumed it was going to be a number of releases that were basically like, this game's very important. Here's why, here's why it was made, but they probably had an like unprecedented access to, uh, Jordan Mechner's, you know, Jeff Mincher. Uh, well, no, I'm talking about for, for Karata Karataka. Okay. Um, they probably had a ton of access to design documents that could, that they could make something that big out of. I don't know if they have all of that from Minter, what was kept around document wise. I mean, obviously it's going they, to be well, a lot, to. but I mean, but it, I, I don't know a lot of, a lot of uh, ZX spectrum games, not Z don't kill me across the pond. Vic 20 games. I'm looking at on here. Some Commodore 64 games uh, on here. I haven't heard of most of these. I'm not, I didn't know so. much about uh, MXX game. He did Commodore 64 yeah. slash MXX. I've only heard of grid runner, I've heard of Grid Runner's fun. Uh, I've heard of that. I've heard of Tempest Office 2000, and I like it. I never played Defender 2000. I never played that. That was on Jaguar. I had no idea. Ah, uh, it's okay. I didn't like that one that much. Um, yeah. So I think they probably have a lot of these earlier games because they're mm -hmm. like, you know. No, like I said, I'm very um, much looking forward to it. I think he's. It's a different philosophy. He's very creative. I've always uh, enjoyed his games, but it's just it's so different from the first gold series yeah release that i, I thought the gold se i thought that was going to be the template going forward yeah it's like getting the halford alfred hitchcock collection uh, hitchcock collection you see like his early stuff versus you know rear rear uh view or rear, rear window and all that stuff versus his earlier works and, and this is like the same approach probably it's going to follow one person as they go forward i don't know how many people you how many people like this you can do that this approach that they were mostly probably a one man band for a majority of their games, especially yeah. earlier. I like um, what they're doing. I just, yeah, it, it, it's not as locked into a format as I thought. I sure. I was expecting, honestly, to see something like Load Runner. Like I figured, you know, maybe like another kind of sure. seminal Follow computer along. game and, sure. and do it that way. Do, I, like, a, do like a, a King's Quest series you could do. Sure. I'm happy to All play right. this. I'm, I'm really looking sure. forward to it. Just that uh, different than what I expected. Uh, this this uh, came in the news. PlayStation Home is losing 1,200 shows at the end of the year. 1,200 shows with no refunds. It's the digital world, Ian. This is from uh, Forbes, your source for uh, investments and finding out you got fucked over on digital sales on, on, the, on Sony. Um 1,200 video titles. They said, Dear PlayStation customer, as of December 20, 31st, uh, due to our content licensing arrangements with content providers, you will no longer be able to watch, not download, not buy, watch any of your previously purchased Discovery content, and the content will be removed from your library like it never existed. Just like your money, it's gone. Click here for a full list. This is uh, abhorrent. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's um, ridiculous. Not even like a partial refund. Give me a fucking keepsake in the mail for all the money I wasted. Fucking I'm not saying this was like, there's probably not a lot of people that spend a ton, like a ton of money. I would hope on this stuff. I would hope you wouldn't like get your favorite TV shows through this uh, versus something a little more stable that we know about that. Like, you know, hopefully wouldn't go away, but this is bad. We have to have, we have to have some fucking 
uh, political will to pass some laws. And this is case in point about like, you need some money back if you can't even access the shit that you bought. Like you just, you, you have to be reimbursed something. Yeah, so, so, something needs to be done about the concept of ownership in terms of what you actually get. Because these days it's pretty much, it's just a license for everything. I can't keep it on my console even? Like what? Yeah. Like, I can't have it tied to my console? Like that's, I'm going to pirate off my console. Oh no, the, oh no, Ian, the person I sell it to when I trade into <laughs> Luna Video Games Toolcases might see my discovery show <laughs> five years from now that I bought. I mean, that's basically what the, what the, what they're yeah. concerned about. <coughs> this is insane. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't even look at the list of stuff. No, it's just, you don't need um, to. It's just gross. 1,200. It's bad. I don't know. Uh, E3 is officially dead. And we called it way before the pandemic. We called it like 2017. Wait, well, we did, on. and we talked oh. about it last year. I don't know that there's anyone that actually thought E3 was going to come back after they canceled last year. I think some people maybe thought there was a future. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean, E3 has been tripping and stumbling over its own dick since, yeah, 2017. So the, last, so the last one was a digital one in 21. That was the last one. Yeah. Yeah, the, no. I thought it canceled two years in a row. No, you're right. It did do 2021. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. So... Um, and I, is it bittersweet? I don't know. Once I started inviting, you know, non-trade people in there, I figured, well, they're desperate now. They need some relevancy because if they know, if they know the trade people don't need it anymore, that's one step. They're the people that are supposed to communicate it to the regular folk. So now we're getting the regular folk to come. It's like, well, then what was the point of this trade show then? Like what, like what, what is it? Is it just a destination vacation for gamers? So that's what you knew was sort of done. That wasn't needed once I started doing that. So when I went three years in a row for, uh. I went, what, 11, 12, and 13. It was still cut off to trade folks and media and, you know, journalists. At least for uh, the first few days. First, No, all the days still. Oh, all the days still? When you were going? There was no public day? I don't Pretty think sure so. there was a public day. I thought public day started well, like mid-2000s. Like Sunday? We went on public day? I don't know. I, like I said, I, I never went. Okay, I was well, just curious. I usually went Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. And, you know, I don't, it wasn't, I don't think public, but whatever. So at least then, back then, we didn't have as much social media as now. This was before Nintendo Directs, which we said that that was a nail in the coffin. Once Nintendo said, "Well, we can just do our Directs," and then everyone else followed suit. And it was it was a different it was a different era. Te even 10, 11 years, it was like the dark ages almost. Mm -hmm. Not so much as like well, two thousand thirteen versus two thousand three, when it's like pre HD and pre you know smartphones. I'm not saying that. But it was a different time even. You still had 10, 11 years ago, you still had a lot more game sites versus now that have closed up shop. You had print magazines still. Not many, but you still had some. You was, know, Game there, Informer was still going. Is GamePro still printing? I, I don't know. Or EGM? That I don't know. Okay. So anyway, so yeah, I don't know if it's bittersweet or not. It's just the way the world works, and the ESA doesn't need my money anyway. <laughs> no. And I think, well, and, you know, people were suggesting... It's just not how information is shared anymore. Um, people were suggesting when people were complaining about the game awards, like we were talking about earlier, that one way to maybe fix it would be to <clears throat> have a trade show during the day <laughs> where companies show off these trailers so that there is more time for actual awards. And people are like, well, that's just E3 and E3 closed. And it's like, if you're going to do the video game awards anyways, uh-huh. Why not just make it a full day event? You don't have to set up booths and shit like that. You could just have all of the journalists sit there with the trailers, write up their pieces, do a couple interviews, and then do the awards show at night. I don't know that there's really a need for that even, but by narrowing it down to that one day, I think that is an idea that could survive. A one day? A one day event that basically culminates in the award show and then it's like, you know... Uh, meetings, interviews, and um, trailer releases during the day. So you want to still invite journalists to a spot? Well, if they're already going to be there for the game awards, that's what I'm saying. Okay, uh, that's a, okay. That's I would lot. not. I would not pitch that as an idea from zero. But if we're already going to be doing the game awards, well, you want to set up some other things around that. Uh, you don't even have to do that. I mean, you don't even have to set up other things around it. You can just show trailers in the same place, but separate them into two shows. Oh, uh, okay. Do like the upcoming There's, games here. Here's the, you know, here's Ubisoft showcase for the next. 
Yeah, but I think like they'd be afraid of um like they they want the um what's what's the word I'm looking for? I'm tired. Sorry, I haven't eaten much all day, intermittent fasting. They they want the cannibalization of people that like, oh, I want my game to win game of the year to watch all the new game stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's why they want to do it like that, I think. Sure. If they separated them out, it would not be as big as an audience. It just wouldn't be. Because you have people that would just want to watch my game of the year at the end. Yeah, you're right. And, no, and, and, no, you're absolutely right. I, yeah, I should have thought about I know, that. I know, right. I know how Jeff Keighley thinks, Ian. Like, <laughs> Terrifying. I, I, know how, I know how the Pope thinks. No. So anyway, so... The fucking Pope. Video games. Video game Pope. <laughs> that was not good. But, but uh, you know, I'm sure he's a nice guy. I'm sure. Yeah, anyway. Even though he kind of... Well, I don't think he stabbed E3 in the back, but he worked at E3 then... Stop working and start his own show. I don't know that he actually. I, I don't I mean, know that I would say. I don't, that. Know, if he, I don't know if he took any trade secrets. Maybe just oper, you know entrepreneurial. I mean, I it know. wasn't hard to see three fucking dying. All right, moving on. 